Today's video is brought to you by Wealthfront. How would you like a keyboard that's in stock right now, fully built, has hot swap, wireless, and is Mac compatible, no modding, nothing additional required? So a few weeks back, iQnix reached out and asked if I'd like to take a look at a keyboard. I did, because a lot of my fellow content creators were pretty stoked that they had moved from CoStar stabs to Cherry Plate Mount stabs on this board, the L80 Cosmic Traveler. I wasn't crazy about the looks. It felt a little juvenile for my taste. Shocking, I know. But I was really interested in this board, the OG80 Wormhole, which which they just announced. But there was a weird catch. The OG80, the newest board, didn't use Cherry stabilizers. It was back to the co-stars. But they said they'd do a special one-off version for me that had the Cherry plate mount stabs, and if it was well-received, it'd be something that they'd look at in the design going forward. So I agreed. But they didn't just send one keyboard. They sent five for some reason. So stay tuned for some giveaways, I guess. These are pre-builds, and because I've absolutely ruined myself with high-end customs, I have to remember that the majority of people just want to buy a keyboard and use it, like as a tool, not a hobby. And I'm pretty impressed with a lot of what I'm seeing here. I should say too that I don't have an affiliate link with them. This video is not sponsored in any way. I mean, yeah, they did send out an entire stack of keyboards, but this B-roll doesn't shoot itself. So if anything, it just creates more work for me. Prices on these currently range from like 159 to 179, though the pricing seems to fluctuate from time to time and they all have a few things in common. They're all what I would consider a 75% layout, which is evidently considered an 80% in Eastern markets. So you have a function row, dedicated arrow keys, but no numpad and it's a little narrower on the desk than a TKL. They're all wired via USB-C or wireless over Bluetooth 5.0 or wireless over 2.4 gigahertz and they all include support for Mac OS with device switching and alternate Mac specific caps. You'll have two 2000 milliamp hour batteries, the wireless performance regardless of Bluetooth or 2.4 is really solid. There's no lag, no delay, no connection issues. If you insist on gaming with a wireless keyboard, I would stick to the 2.4 gigahertz just to play it safe, but the Bluetooth 5.0 works perfectly fine for everything else. These are all mostly plastic builds with a steel plate, but about as premium a feel as you're going to get in a plastic board. They all have dual angle flip down feet. They're all available with or without RGB and they all include a dust cover. These all include PBT caps. These are die sub, not double shot, but they have good thickness. The legends all look nice and crisp and good uniformity. The OG80 stands out as not having legends that are on par with the others. They've gone with a different font and the modifier text is a little fuzzy. All these keycaps are now manufactured in such a way that the little standoffs in the corners don't exist anymore. So no interference sound like you may have called in Wildcats video. Only the L80 formula has them, but they've been modded. I can't get any interference here, which may be due in part to the switch choice, which we'll talk about. The caps also vary in texture. The Cosmic Traveler keys are the standout as they are really smooth, like no texture at all. None of these boards have backlit keycaps. If having the legends on your keys light up is important to you, if you're gonna add aftermarket keycaps, I would avoid the Cosmic Traveler. It's the only one of the bunch that has south-facing LEDs. Every other model has north-facing switches. Like I said earlier, only the Cosmic Traveler has the cherry plate mount stabs. The rest of these are all co-star. So why is that a big deal? Stabilizers or stabs are the things that support your longer keycaps, like your spacebar. And they are a big deal because if they rattle like they normally do in pre-built or gaming boards, it makes your keyboard sound gross. So why is having co-star stabilizers such a big deal? Well, the truth is for most average consumers, it's not. They are a complete pain to work on if you need to mod them or even if you need to change your keycaps. If you're not into keyboards and you pull one of these off, you're going to regret it when you try to put it back on. But going over all these boards right out of the box, they don't sound to me like they need modding even. It's obvious that there's some solid factory lube going on here even without looking and the stabilizers, co-stars included, feel and sound really good. Like light years ahead of what you get from the likes of Razer, Corsair, Logitech, etc. But the Cherry plate mount stabs surely sound better than the co-stars, right? We'll talk about that in a sec. A big reason it became difficult for me to recommend pre-built keyboards over time is that until quite recently, you basically only had your choice of cherry switches. I don't like most cherry switches. They feel really scratchy, sound scratchy, and they usually have some spring or leaf ping associated with them. Some kind of negative noise or feel that you don't want in your keyboard. With all these boards, you have your choice of TTC switches as well. These have been reviewed really well as budget options, even amongst the serious keyboard crowd. They're all box designed, generally very smooth, no bad sounds. And for most people, you don't have to take them apart and lube them by hand. With the A80 Explorer and the L80 Formula, you can get TTC Gold Pinks or Speed Silvers. In the Cosmic Traveler or the Wormhole, you get the options of the TTC Ace as well. They're all linear, Gold Pinks are very light, Ace is heavier, and Speed Silver is in the middle, but it activates on half the travel time. For what it's worth, of the options here, Gold Pinks are my favorite. If for whatever reason there's not something here that really does it for you, all these boards are also hot swaps, so you can start to explore the never-ending rabbit hole of custom keyboard switches. They do support five-pin switches, so no clipping, and they include a combo keycap 
step and switch puller. All these boards also lack any kind of customization software. So you're not gonna be rebinding any keys or setting up any layers. You're gonna be limited to the default shortcuts on the board. You're also limited to a few stock RGB animations, colors and brightness levels. So there's no per key RGB going on. There's four levels of brightness adjust and it doesn't get very bright at the max. It's best to look at this as just a backlight, except for the OG80 where the whole case is clear frosted. So the RGB becomes a much bigger star of the show. Sadly, they missed the opportunity to have underglow here. They could have really made this thing a complete spectacle on your desk if they'd slap some big LEDs on the underside of the PCB. The main differences in the case design come from the top row. On the Cosmic Explorer or the Formula, it's a flatter build, but the top row or the F row is way up there. Like you gotta reach for it. On the Explorer and the Wormhole, they're angled toward you, which not only makes them easier to hit, but it's also like a retro visual that I liked a lot more in person than I did in the pictures. They really drive that vibe home too with the LED placement up here, which also serves as a caps lock indicator. The top portion of the A80 is just kind of wasted space, just this little textured strip that doesn't do anything. On the OG80, they've given us this magnetic cover over a little compartment that holds your 2.4 wireless dongle. Smart. So what I'm hearing is some really obvious hollowness here. The space bars are loud, but the sound is clean. Like there's no ping, there's no rattle, there's nothing inherently negative here, except for that obvious hollowness. To me, these sound a lot better than anything you would buy off the shelf. There is some felt in here as a plate dampener. It's also pretty obvious which boards feature additional foam in the bottom. The Cosmic Traveler and the Formula both sound more dampened than the Wormhole especially. Interestingly, only one of these boards had any space bar rattle at all, and it's the Cherry Plate Mount Stabs on the Cosmic Traveler. That board has some rattle. What normally causes rattle in CoStar Stabs is how they fit in the plate. They usually require a little mod, but these don't. These are really solid and they're lubed very well. So yeah, I'm just gonna say it. I like the CoStar stabs here more than the Cherry. As far as modding these boards, I just wouldn't, to be honest. It's clear that they are not designed to be opened and modded. It is very difficult to get into these without permanently damaging the board in some way, at least cosmetically. The case screws are under the feet and there's one hidden behind the label. The frame is pressure fit with clips and it's really tight. I broke several plastic cell phone tools trying to open this thing. There's also cables galore inside for the batteries, the LEDs and the Bluetooth antenna. One of the most popular keyboard mods out there is the Tempest Tape Mod. It gold medaled in 2021 for drastically changing the sound of your keyboard by just applying some masking tape or painter's tape to the back of your PCB. It usually makes a very profound difference, but here it's much more subtle. It sounds a little tighter, just not as much resonance. You could combat that further with some polyfill, which would look pretty rough in the clear frosted case, but in reality, I just don't think it's worth it on these boards. The market this board is aimed at, your grab and go end user wouldn't want to. And if you do want an entry level board to mod and experiment with, I'd recommend something easier to do that with, like an entry level Keychron. For the end user who's just looking for a keyboard and not a new lifestyle, especially one who uses Mac or needs wireless, I think this is a very solid option. You do still have hot swap too, so you can play around with switches without a big commitment. If you've seen videos that make a big deal out of the fact that they use CoStar stabs on these, I really don't think that's a big deal. The A80 Explorer 
it's my favorite board of the bunch, and it uses co-stars. On the other hand, if you want to potentially get into a soul-crushing rabbit hole that you'll never financially recover from and into a fulfilling new hobby, the offerings from Keychron are much easier to work on. Just know that the popular models you've seen recently, the Q1 and Q2, don't offer wireless at the time of this video. I started to realize pretty quickly after getting into this hobby that investing in a shelf full of high-end keyboards was not going to get me where I wanted to go financially. Like a lot of people, I got lured into investing from overnight success stories of meme stocks, day trading, and crypto. I have seen some success, and I like when I get the opportunity to potentially help other people experience that too, but I've not seen a lot of things in the space that I really feel comfortable recommending to people. Some methods are really high risk, and or you have to have your face in it 100% of the time, and that's just not realistic for a lot of people. That's why I was so impressed with Wealthfront, the sponsor of today's video. Investing doesn't have to be complicated or time consuming, and you don't have to be an expert. You can become an investor in just a few minutes. Whether you need general savings or a retirement account, you answer a few questions to determine your risk tolerance and wealth Wealthfront will build you a portfolio to help maximize your returns and minimize your risk. After that, Wealthfront goes to work investing your money for you in a globally diversified portfolio of low-cost ETFs or exchange-traded funds, and it only takes $500 to get started. If you're content to let Wealthfront take the wheel, that's great, but you also have the flexibility to build your own portfolio as you learn more or if there are particular sectors that you really believe in. As you make edits to your portfolio, Wealthfront will tell you if any of the changes affect your risk score, so you still have some guidance. They also offer rebalancing too, so over time, if any assets drift too far away from the target based on risk, Wealthfront can evaluate rebalancing your portfolio. And with tax loss harvesting, when they sell an ETF from your portfolio at a loss, they not only replace it with a similar ETF, but you can use the loss to offset income or gains, which can lower your tax bill. If you're ready to get started with investing, visit invest.wealthfront.com slash badseedtech to learn how you can get up to $5,000 of your portfolio managed for free for life. Big thanks to Wealthfront for sponsoring today's video, and thank you so much for your time. If you want to check out some additional keyboard content, you can do that right here. If you'd like to look at some audio content, which we'll be getting back to very shortly, you can do that right here. That's it for today, and I will catch you all in the next one. Stay up. <laughs>